Welcome, TNT, to our episode two. We are still going through our start zone. Hope you guys had a good time doing our Zoom learning, learning Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Today we have a verse, Romans 10, 17, but I have on my hand this hacky sack, um, and I'm going to tell you guys some three numbers, all right? So follow along. One. The first number is 27. We're going to continue. Here we go. Ready? 8, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 36, 37. Next number is 37. That's not true. The next number is 30. The next number is 39. So we have 27 and 39. For my math whizzes, 27 and 39 make what? And that's what we're going to go to. All right, here we go. 66. So the number is 66. 27 and 39 make 66. Those are numbers that you guys need to remember because today we are going to talk about the Bible. I'm going to drink some water. Oh no. I'm out of water. This is ice. All right. So today we'll talk about the Bible. Let me get set up here. The Bible is God's message to us, and it helps us in so many ways. There's no other book like the Bible. The most important message of the Bible is the good news about Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 17 says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. So, you guys have your start zone, right? The first section of your packet. I'm catching my breath here. And tell us those three things the Bible tells us. What are those three things? It tells us about who God is. It tells us about who Jesus is. And it tells us about ourselves. So, let's go through those one at a time. The Bible is a special book. And the Bible is the only book that is God breathed. He breathed it. That means the Bible came from God. And God used many men to write the Bible. Okay? In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says that all Scripture, Scripture is another word for the Bible, is God breathed and is useful. It's useful. Okay? It's not just a book. It's useful for teaching us what to do. It's telling us what not to do. It rebukes us. And it corrects. It shows us the correct path to God and it is good for training. So if you guys are, are softball players, if you guys are lacrosse players, if you guys are soccer players, there's training of what to do, what not to do. This is the right way to do it. It's not just, we're just not just going to shoot a basket. This is the right form and it is training. For what? For righteousness. So we want to train for what God says is the right thing to do. The Bible tells us who he is, who we are, and what Christ has done for you and for me. The main message of the Bible is the good news about Jesus, that he is the Son of God and that he is the Savior of the world. Savior of what? Savior of everyone who puts their faith in him because we know that we all have sin and fall short of God's perfection. Nobody's perfect, but God is perfect. And because of all the bad things that we've done, like what we talked about the bowl of cereal last week, all the bad things, somebody needs to pay for it. I can't pay for it, but you know what? Jesus did, and Jesus can. Romans 10, 17 again says, Faith, believing, knowing in your heart, 
and act in the right way. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. God's word in the Bible are just as important if he said them out loud to your face. Okay? So for your start zone, there was a question there about like if mom texted you, um, God's words are so important uh, because it's good for us, right? It's good for teaching, telling us what to do, for rebuking, telling us what not to do, correcting us, showing us the right way, and for training, all right? In Psalm 119, 105, it says that your word, God's word, is a lamp to our feet. It shines the light to our feet and it lights our path. It both shows us where we're at and it shines the right path for us to go. If you guys go driving at night, mom and dad have to turn on the lights so that they know where they're going, right? It shows where we're going. And so the word of God, the word from God, is a lamp that shines for us where we're at and where we need to go. The Bible is one of God's gifts to us, and it helps us many ways, right? It says in Psalm 149, one, Psalm 119, 49 to 50, Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. My comfort in my suffering is this, your promise preserves my life, right? And so what, what is preserves? For, for food to go bad... For food not to go bad, we have to put it in the free, on the fridge, right? Or we put salt in it, right? And so um, for our lives to be preserved, right, we either need to be put in a cool place where it could be refreshing and we don't go bad, or we have to put salt in it, right? And we need the Word of God to do both. We need for the Word of God to preserve our life, to keep it fresh and to keep it good um, to the parts in us that... You know, that we want to give to people. And we want to be a blessing like our theme for Awana this year. All right. So let me go through why I went and played hacky sack for you guys. The Bible has two parts. The Old Testament, which has 39 books. And the New Testament, which has 27 books. Both two parts of the Bible point to one person. And that is the person of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Bible fact number two, again, those numbers, the Old Testament has 39 books. And the, the Old Testament has 39 books. The New Testament has 27 books. All together, my math was is 39 and 27 make 66. All the stories in the Bible are true, and they most take place in the near near the land of Israel, right? And so it's right there. And there's about 40 men who wrote it. Guess what? 40 men in the span of 1,500 years, right? If we can get three people to write about the same thing, it would be just kind of wonky. There was 40 men talking about God, having a relationship with the Lord that wrote the Bible, and it's all complete. And it's all complete, and it all points to God, and it all points to Jesus. And they're all consistent, and they're all the same. 1,500 years. Isn't that crazy? And it was written in three languages, in Hebrew, in Greek, and in Aramaic. So our Bibles today are written in English, but it's translated from what we understand of Hebrew, what we understand of Greek, what we understand of Aramaic, and it was written to a certain group of people and it has to be consistent with what we know about God and what we know about Jesus. And then the last Bible fact is this, that the first book ever printed was the Bible and more Bibles have been printed than any other book. It's the first and it's the most printed. Isn't that amazing? And that is God's gift for you and for me. And here at Awana, we love to hide God's word in our heart, to make it a lamp into our feet and a light to our path so that we hide it in our hearts so that we will not sin against God. We are so stoked to see you guys again at 1030 at Zoom this Saturday. Please work on that, Romans 1017. I know you can do it work on your start zone and then the following week we're going to start our agents of grace book 
it's so nice to see you all. Thank you for watching, and um, we'll see you this Saturday. Bye now.